Hello and welcome back to another episode of the 4-Track Restoration. Last time you saw me working on those rear arches which were completely rotted out. I've remade all of those now. Today I want to deal with something a little bit more challenging, it's the sills. Now 4-Track sills are sort of famed for rotting through. A lot of people use box section to remake them which makes them very tough but also quite ugly. I've got a bit of a challenge on my hands in that I want it to look completely standard, but I want these sills to be utterly, utterly bomb proof. But to that end, I have got a bit of a plan. So I'm gonna talk you through it as I do the job and hopefully you'll enjoy what I do. Let's go. Right then, so the next part of the rebuild I'm gonna be tackling are the sills. This is the near side of the Daihatsu, and uh, you can see this sill doesn't look too bad, save for a bit of fairly agricultural welding on the back part. They, both sills are pretty rusty, to be honest, um, and I want to upgrade them anyway. What I mean by that is I'd like to make these sills stronger than they were from the factory. To do that, a lot of people use box section. It makes the sills very, very strong, but it does look a little bit not amateurish, but it looks a little bit um, far from standard and it's not really the look I'm going for. I'd like this to look like a standard sill, but be many, many times stronger than you would get in a, in a standard Daihatsu. So to that end, my plan is to cut the sill out completely, uh, inner and outer, leaving about an inch of clear metal on the top side of this sill. And then I'm gonna use tube section rather than box section. Now to demonstrate what I mean by that, uh, this is the tube I'll be using. It's about three mil wall thickness, so fairly hefty stuff. Something like 43, 44 millimeter diameter. This is a cross section of a standard four track sill. Now what you can see with this tube is it more or less mimics the radius of the standard sill. So the plan is to cut the bottom part of the sill off, which would be this part. If you imagine that would leave a small piece of metal here, this will take the place of this. So where this thick tube is, I will then plate the bottom across and redo the inner sill. I'll probably use something like 1.2 mil steel for that, so it'll be fairly, fairly hefty. Another bonus to using round tube as opposed to box section to do these sills is the bottom of the front wing is obviously a round profile. Where that meets the sill, if I were to use box section, it would look really quite clunky. You'd have a square face meeting a fairly nice rounded bottom of a, of a wing. So again, using this tube, in place of the sill that will allow me to blend into the bottom of the front wings really really nicely and i think it will look factory and well the irony is it will look like it's never been touched it will look like any, any other four track sill the secret is of course it's going to be much much stronger and more importantly it will be future proof i don't think these sills will ever rust out in the whole time that this truck remains on the road so it's got to be a good move so it's not just going to be a tube across where the sill should be. To all intents and purposes, it will look like a standard Daihatsu sill, but it will be much, much stronger. Once I have run that sill in and I've created a new inner sill as well to join to, that will obviously be connected into the floor of the truck and also into this rear arch I've remade. So as I said, this sill does look like it's in fairly healthy condition, apart from a small bit at the back. So you might be thinking, well, why on earth would I cut this out and go to all this effort? Well, underneath it feels pretty crispy and I will demonstrate to you just how rotten it is with my bare fingers pulling the metal apart. So it does want redoing. As I say, my approach to this, as with the rest of the project, is if I'm going to be tackling a job, if I'm going to be redoing some metal work or making something um, better than it is right now, I don't just want to take it to a, a standard form, I want to make it better than it would have been anyway. And that is very much the ethos of these sills. So first job is to mark everything up and cut this sill out, and then I'll run in the new pipe and I'll explain what I'm doing as I go through. When I'm busy working on a restoration like the 4-Track, I'm not left with a lot of time to use and enjoy my other vehicles, which means they run the risk of getting a flat battery, which is not good for them. That's where today's sponsor comes in, Top Don have kindly sent me one of their TB6000 Pro maintenance chargers. What's great about the TB6000 Pro is that it can be used on a multitude of different battery types, from standard 12 volt car batteries to smaller 12 volt motorcycle batteries and even 6 volt batteries. 
Not only is the TB6000 Pro a charger and maintainer, it can also be used as a battery tester, allowing you to check the health of your battery. Simply plug the TB6000 Pro into a power socket, connect it to your vehicle's battery and let it automatically keep your battery charged up and healthy without the risk of overcharging. Check the link in this video's description for more information on the TB6000 Pro and where you can purchase one. Now, back to the restoration. Right then, now that the outer cell has been cut out, I can give you a better idea of what I meant by my method with this tube. As you can see, I've left about an inch of clear metal on the top of the outer sill. I'm gonna get my tube and just lay that in slightly underneath and behind. Not so far that it makes a step and not so far in that it cuts, but just the right amount so that with the correct amount of weld and flushing, that will look like the standard Daihatsu sill. Now, when I get to the front, as I said, I wanted to match the bottom of the wing. So I'll take you up there and show you how I'm handling that. Right then, so here at the front of the sill, you can see that where I've cut the majority of the outer sill out, I've actually left the front profile, which is where the, the wing will meet the sill. Obviously the wing is removed, but it'll be slightly further out and it'll sit just in line with this lip here. So I've left that. Idea being, when I've got my tube laid in, I'll profile the front edge out, and when it gets to the front, it will sit in just behind that lip. Once welded and flushed, that will look like all one piece. Again, like a completely standard Daihatsu sill, but much, much stronger. So the other consideration when redoing these sills, obviously it's not just about the outer sill, it's about the inner sill as well. Now you can see how rusty the inner sill is on this truck, and this was the better side of the two. So as mentioned before, it might have looked all right, but it definitely wanted doing. So to give you an idea of how I'm gonna handle this, you can see that this inner sill is made of two sections. There's a, a, an upright part and a part that joins the bottom of the outer sill. Now the majority of the rust is obviously on the bottom where moisture and salt and dirt collects. So the plan is to completely cut out the lower part of this inner sill, leaving as much healthy flat face inner sill as possible. Obviously at the back that's not possible, I have to cut that out completely and remake it because it's completely rusted. But if you imagine that's all one solid piece of clear, clean, healthy metal, once I've got my tube on the outside of this outer sill, I'll plate across the bottom. Let me show you with a bit of tube here. If the tube is sitting like that, I'll plate across from the bottom here, all the way through to the inner sill where it's healthy. Now again, I'll probably use something like 1.2 mil, something like that, something fairly hefty. So it's fairly, fairly strong. So as I say, all the way from the front there, where I've profiled into the front edge of that sill, tube all the way across, plated on the bottom to a new healthy inner sill that will make for a pretty robust sill. Now, when I get to the back here, where I've remade all of the arch, etc., that needs to be keyed in and, and made to look right. So I'll gather my thoughts on that and I'll get back to you later. But for now, that is the plan. So next up, I'm gonna cut away this, this rusty old inner sill and hopefully start making up some healthy base for the new setup. I'm just about to get cutting these inner sills out. I want to show you one of the previous repairs on this inner sill. Just look at that. What? This is what I'm working with. That is a previous repair on this inner sill. They've just plated over the old rotten job. They haven't cut anything out and it's just continued to rot and spread. And it is just awful. Look at that. 
Anyway, good news is all this is gonna get cut out now and it's gonna get done properly. So I just wanted to show you that before it gets cut out and thrown away forever. Let's crack on. Right then, after a fair bit of cutting, that hideous old repair has been removed from the inner sill at the rear here. It looks a little bit drastic at the moment because we're back to seeing inside the car from outside. But it's the only way really. It had to get rid of that horrible, horrible mess of a repair so that it can be done properly. But to bring it up to speed, that's the back of the inner sill taken out. I've cut out as much of the really horrible stuff as I need to at the moment. This part of the inner sill will be remaining. I'll be plating along to match this height all the way across to the back here. And then that will be joined from this point to the tube that's going to act as our sill. I'll show you again. The tube will be there and it will join a plate will join the inner sill to the new outer sill, i.e. the tube. And it'll be 1.2, something like that across the bottom. So now that most of this is cut out, it's time to clean everything up and make up the rest of this inner sill that I've had to remove due to rust. And we'll go from there. So let's crack on with that. Okay, very quickly, the inner sill has now been made up. We've got these two new pieces at the back, which join into the existing inner sill, which will act as our inner sill upright. Again, the bottom sill will come off of. So that hasn't been reattached, obviously, where that bad repair was. That'll be done when the sill is finished and I get on and work on the floor panel. But the next thing to do is to get the tube ready to sit in here. So what I need to do is cut out an end of the tube. So rather than having a full round, I'll cut a half profile to accommodate this structure inside the sill. It looks wet at the moment because it's in some rust converter, but once that dries, it'll be fine. Uh, as I say, once everything is fitted, this will all be injected with wax oil or stone chip or something similar uh, to prevent any future corrosion issues. So next thing, I'm gonna profile the end of a tube and then I'm gonna offer it up to this sill hold it in place, tack it in place, and then you'll start to see the, the sill come together. Right, and that is a sill temporarily held into place, ready to be tacked. Hopefully my ramblings now make a bit of sense. You can see where the swage end of this pipe fits in against this shoulder, keeping the profile of the sill. If I show you that direction, the sill profile is pretty much the same as a standard Daihatsu. Underneath you can see it's yet to be joined into this inner sill here. But for now, the plan is to get this bar tacked in and ready to be swaged properly. The back is left long, that will get cut down to size and joined into the arch properly later on. But for now, 
I just wanna get this pipe securely in place. So that is the next job. Right then, that little bit of welding's done and this tube is now flushed into the top outer sill. So that little fillet that I left has been flushed down into the tube. You can see the tube is mounted pretty securely. It's not going anywhere. Obviously still got to do the inner sill. But the bit I'm coming to now is the rear arch I've made up. So you can see I've cut the sill to length, the tube. Um, now when I put this sill together, I wasn't sure what the back of this, sorry, when I put this arch together, I wasn't sure what the back of this sill was gonna look like. So I just sort of, chucked it all together as best I could and thought I'd take it apart and come back to it when I was doing the sills. Well, that time has now come. So you can see the sill slash the tube terminates here in line with where the arch sits. So what I need to do is take this newly made inner sill. Obviously that will be getting connected to this tube underneath here, but I need to fill this patch in here to not only cover the end of this tube, but also create the end of what will be the box sill essentially. So the next thing to do is make a template up, get some sheet on the go, close in this end of the sill, make good this arch, tie everything into the bottom, making this all one smooth, continuous flowing piece. Obviously this will be hidden by the over arch, the big fat plastic over arch, but um, I want it to be, be right and I don't want it to have any holes obviously, I want it to be completely rock proof. So that is the next stage to get the back of this sill tied together and looking as one. Just to give you a bit more detail up front of the sill, you can see that lip that I was talking about, there's a very, very slight bell profile if you look at this direction. That's because where the wing meets this sill has to be in line with this, this end this, that I left, this, uh, this profile. Now the tube is obviously sitting in by about one or two mil. So the technique there is to just fill with weld, grind back and flush it. So there's a very, very slight, slight profile to it. You'll never notice it. Now these sills, um, they will be getting finished in a hard wearing, probably a stone chip finish. So any slight profiles that will be even less obvious when that's all done. And the other thing to mention, on the standard sill there is this line, this gap, that is where two sills basically become one. This sill sits over this rear sill. Because I want this to look factory, I'm gonna retain that line. I'm gonna continue it down into this, this new section, the tube just out of sight. So at a glance, it will look completely factory, completely stock, but obviously it's just a, it's just a impression of what was there before, just so it looks right. So back to where I was, and I'm gonna crack on with this rear arch and boxing everything in here.
Okay, after a lot of work, I've got the sill now tied into the arch. Just please forgive the amount of bodywork going on on this arch at the moment. I'll get to that in another video. But um, for now, you can see that, that sill, that bar, that tube, that is all joined in nicely. It probably looks a little bit of a mess on this video because this is all obviously back to bare metal and it's hard to sort of pick out the profile. But hopefully you can see if I run my hand over it, this sill is now smoothly blended into the arch. And on the inner arch here, we've got this new plate, which is tight up against into that tube. I will be injecting probably through the end here into the tube and through the end here into the sill and then either welding over or grommeting or something eventually. The underside still is open, that will be getting plated shortly, but just like this you can see that that sill is now one with the rear arch. This is sort of academic because you'll never see this because when the plastic body kit, the overarch kit goes on this truck, this is completely hidden. I just wanted that to be as smooth as possible for peace of mind myself. I will show you something else really cool about using this tube. When you put the body kit on, it sits perfectly with the profile of this tube. So I'll show you that now. Right then, so to show you how well this works with the overarch uh, body kit, I'm gonna fit one now temporarily and show you how well that profile works. Just ignore the damaged seal on the edge of this, where it's all broken, that's getting changed. But if you look here, you can see the profile of this pipe is absolutely perfect for the original molding shape of this arch, which means when, once that's on and it's fixed in place, this will definitely look like an original Daihatsu seal, which is exactly the look I'm going for. Of course, it goes without saying, this, uh, this seal will be getting replaced when I redo the body kit, but there's a lot of work to be done on that. So that's for a much later video. For now though, really pleased with the profile of these seals. I think it's gonna look fantastic. and that sill is now finished. You can see the outer tube as described, all tied into the rear arch, underside is plated, and the front is blended into that front lip ready to receive the wing. I'll show you underneath so you can see how I've done the inner sill and underneath. Okay, so you can see the inner sill here and the plating I've used underneath. This is as described 1.2 mil plate, so it's very, very tough stuff. You will notice that particularly bad repair that I removed, obviously I've made the sill up properly. There's still a big hole in the floor and this cross member isn't attached yet. That's because when I redo the floor, I'll work that in properly and tie it all together. But now we've got this nice healthy sill to tie into, I'm a lot more confident that that will be a, a proper repair this time. So as described, this looks like a completely factory sill, but it's much, much tougher. I've even included the, the little gouge which replicates the factory mark where the two original sill pieces overlap. So when this is chipped, you see a little step there, when this is chipped, that'll be a very, very subtle mark down through there, just so it looks proper. So although this does look like a completely factory Daihatsu sill, its party piece is, of course, it's absolutely bomb proof. And to prove that, I'm gonna use a lump hammer. So if this was a normal factory Daihatsu sill, if I did this, it'd probably be covered in dents. But as you can see here, it's absolutely fine. Same with the underside. It's a very, very sturdy sill. Now, this is exactly what I was after. I wanted it to be an improvement on standard, but of course it had to be, uh, it had to look proper. So this is all finished. It's in bare metal, obviously, because I've just finished working on it. I'm gonna chuck some chemicals on there just to keep it from flash rusting. And eventually that will be getting done in etch primer and in stone chip and then top coat. So it will look brand new when it's finished. But for now, that's it. The sill is finished. I'm going to pop on, do the other side, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>